Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve the problem of lead code platform that is from bi-weekly contact 68. So make sure to watch the complete video. But before proceeding further in the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed our channel till now, then guys, please make sure to subscribe. It will really motivate me to make more such content for you and definitely the channel will be helpful for you. So do subscribe our channel. Um, well, let's start with the problem statement now. One more thing to mention, make sure to join our Telegram family as well. The link for the Telegram is given in the description itself, so make sure to join it. So the problem is maximum number of words found in sentences. So here you can see a sentence is a list of words that are separated by a single space, like with no leading or trailing spaces. So we have been given an array of string sentences where each sentence I represents a single sentence. Our task is to determine the maximum number of words that appear in a single sentence. Let's understand the same with the help of an example. Right. So you can see this is the sentences array we are having and each element is denoting a single sentence like this one, this one and this one. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to, do, we have to return the maximum number of words that appear in a single sentence. For example, in this one, if you will check, so how many words do we have? One, two, three, four, five. In this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. In this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, maximum one is what? 6. And that's what we are getting in the output. Even they have explained the same. That the first sentence has 5 words in total. Second one is having 4 words in total. Third one is having 6 words in total. So, the maximum number of words in a single sentence comes from the third sentence. And which has 6 words. Right. Let's see the example 2 as well. So, here you can see. This is having two words. This is having three words. This is having three words. So, of course, this is also a possibility that multiple sentences can contain the same number of words. Our main task is to just to focus on the maximum number of words. So, in this scenario, this is what three is. That's why we are getting three in the output. Right. So, I hope that you, that you must have understood the problem statement by now. So, it was an easy problem. Let's understand the code for the same. So, first of all, what we are doing is, let me copy it here. Let me copy it from here so that it can be easy for me to explain right so okay we are going through each sentence that we have in our sentences array so that's what we are maintaining a loop for the same now inside this loop we are maintaining another loop for what for counting the number of words right now i have taken this count value here inside the loop okay pause here Okay, so I have initialized the count value here inside the loop as 1. Now why? Because we are counting the number of words and here inside this loop what I am doing is if we are coming across a single space, if we are coming across a space then I am incrementing the value of count C++. But you know like this word will be missing because in that scenario space is appearing after this. So this one is uh, like how many number of spaces we do have 1, 2, 3, Four. So from here, we'll be getting four only. However, the words are what? Five. That's why I have initialized the value as one. You must have understood this part. So basically in this loop, we are doing nothing. Just we are counting the number of words. And outside of this loop, now in this loop is just to count the number of words for each sentence. This one, this one, and this one. Outside of this loop, we are maintaining a variable max, which is storing the maximum number of words that we are getting from a particular sentence. And at the last, we are simply returning this max value um if you want to just try to submit it like it's working so you can see it got accepted so this was the code for this particular problem even i have provided the coding in the description so you can just check it from there let's discuss our next problem now so here's our next problem find all possible recipes from given supplies the problem says you have information about n different recipes you are given a string array recipes and a 2d string array ingredients the is recipe has the name recipes i and you can create it if you have all the needed ingredients from ingredients i ingredients to a recipe may need to be created from other recipes ingredients i may contain a string that is that there that is a we contain a string that is in recipes so you are also given a string array supplies containing all the ingredients that you initially have and you have an infinite supply of all of them so return a list of all the recipes that you can create you may return the answer in any order note that two recipes may contain each other in the ingredients right so that is also one thing given to us 
So let's understand the same with the help of an example. For example, if you are interested in making this recipe of bread, so for this you need these two ingredients, yeast as well as flour. So there is another area that is given to you, that is supply, which is maintaining, which is just telling you, telling you what? That um, all the ingredients that you are having with you. So you have to basically determine that all the recipes that you can make, right? Um, with the material that you are having. So you can see for bread we need yeast and flour. And we are having this now. We are having yeast and flour with us in the supplies area. So hence we'll be able to make that. Right? We can make that since we have the ingredients yeast and flour. Let's have a look on the next example as well. So here you can see two recipes we are interested to make. That is bread and sandwich. So for bread, what is the ingredient that we need? We need yeast as well as flour. Now in the supplies, if you will check, so we are having yeast as well as flour. So we will be able to make bread. Right now, next one is sandwich. So for sandwich, we need bread as well as meat. Now, in the supplies, if you will check, then we are having only meat. But we have already made bread now. We have already made bread. So we are having bread along with us. So in our supply part, we will be having this bread also along with us. So in the output, that's why we are getting bread as well as sandwich because we are able to satisfy the criteria we are able to satisfy the ingredients part for both of these recipes you can see even they have mentioned the same in the explanation that we can create bread since we have the ingredients yeast and flour also we can create sandwich since we have the ingredient meat and can create the ingredient bread right so even you can understand the same with the help of an example three as well so i hope that the problem statement must be clear by now so how we have solved this problem how we approach this problem so let's understand it so first of all what we are doing is we are maintaining a hash set to which we are going to add okay let me tell you from the starting itself we are having a hash set and this n value is holding the length of our recipe for example in this scenario if you will take what is the length of recipe means uh two right because as of now we are interested to make these two recipes now uh, we are maintaining this variable found initially as true. We'll be understanding why. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just adding all the material or like all the elements that we do have in supplies array to our set, right? Set dot and str. Like str is nothing but the element in supplies. So here, if I would mention that in set, what we are having is we are having these things: yeast, flour, meat. Okay, let me right here now what i'm doing is we are creating this array list res this is what we are going to return at the end right we have to return a list okay so while found so as of now we have mentioned the found value as true so we'll be moving inside this while loop now we have updated the value of found as false so what we are doing is we are going through the going through this loop till the time i value is lesser than that of n now think about the scenario that if your supply supply is already having the recipe that you are interested to make right so supply value we have already inserted into whom into set so that's what we are checking here that if set already contains the recipes that is at the ith position so what is the recipe at the ith position right is it present in our set no right but if it is so we don't have to perform any operation we have to continue in the loop right so as of now bread is not present in our set so what we are doing is we are having this list to which we are storing the element of the ingredient so what is the ith element of the ingredient what is the value of i is of now zero so this part that is yeast as well as flour is going to be stored in li now what we are doing is we are simply taking a for loop now here we are checking let's suppose consider a scenario you want to make bread but the ingredient that you need to make bread if it is not present in our set it means you cannot make bread right so there is no use to proceed further because if at least any of the ingredient is missing we cannot make bread so that's what we are doing here is that we are going to each element of li li as of now this is nothing but yeast and flow so we are checking if set dot contains s right if the value is present that is going to return true and not true means false if set dot contains s is going to return false and not false means true it means this if part will be executed so we are going to update the value of f as false and we are going to break the loop right now here we are checking but as of now this scenario is not satisfied because you can see if we will check so yeast is present in our set as well as this floor is also present in our set so this if condition is not going to be true 
so here we will check if f you know like f, f is still true because this part this if part isn't become true right so if true so font value we are going to update this true because we have mentioned here it has false and now to our set we are going to add what bread because now we can make bread the criteria the ingredient that were needed for making bread we are already having that also in our res as you can make bread now so in your result variable in your result list we are adding this bread we will be proceeding further i value is going to be one now and one less than two condition is still true now we're going to check if set dot contain recipe i so what is the i is recipe sandwich so this is not true we'll be proceeding further right so in li what is the element is going to be stored now bread as well as meat right so again we are going through the elements that is present in the li so we're going to check set does not contain this bread of course set do have right this set do have bread set does not contain meat set have meat right set have meat so this part is this if condition is not going to be true so here f will be true right f will be true so found value is going to be updated as true now to the set we are going to add this recipe as well this one sandwich and to our res value also we are going to add sandwich if you want i can write it even so in set we'll be adding the sandwich also in res also we'll be adding the sandwich and now this for loop condition is going to be false because i value is going to be what i value is going to be to this time and two less than two condition is false now still you can see the found value is going to be true so this while loop will be true right now we are updating the value of found as false again we'll be proceeding here because n value is what now two and i value is zero so zero less than two condition is false but here if you will check now that if set dot contains recipes i right so what is going to happen what is the value at uh, recipe i it means recipe of zero uh bread right so we have bread okay here if you will check we have bread so bread is already included in our set right so that's why we have to continue then i value is going to be one at recipe of one what do we have sandwich and sandwich is already been included in our set right so we have to continue right and after this you know like found value hasn't been updated to true because we haven't proceed further these values are already present in our set so this loop is going to be this while loop is going to be false now so we will come out of this and at the last we'll be returning this res part so at the last we are simply returning this res so in res we are having two things bread as well as sandwich and that's what the expected output for this particular case bread as well as sandwich right so i hope you must you must have understood this question it's like it was kind of based sort of an observation part so the code for this as well is provided in the description hope you have understood both the problem statement and the code part as well Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Keep learning, keep coding.